The scary truth about the Denver Nuggets. Despite being without their second and third scoring options, the Blue Arrow Jamal Murray and MPJ Michael Porter Jr., our game's greatest passing center of all time in the Joker, combined with the clutch, shifty, yet completely underrated shot creator in big game Tay Monte Morris, an impactful 3 and D wing in Aaron Gordon, and also the team's second leading scorer in Will Barton, have all put the Nugs only two and a half games back of home court advantage in the first round of the playoffs, currently sitting as the number six seed in the Western Conference. From Boogie backing up the reigning MVP, the shocking bench production from the Rook Busy Bones, and another overlooked perimeter guy in Uncle Jeff Green, Denver's got an extremely deep team. So make sure you stay tuned for the details on all that and more. Right quick, only 12.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds, it makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. DeMarcus Cousins was cut by Milwaukee a couple months ago despite performing well. Then, after three 10 days in the Mile High City, Boogie finally got his long overdue guaranteed 2022 contract on February 25th. Under his favorite coach of all time, who he loved playing for back in Sacramento, Mike Malone, Cousins is playing solid basketball, which we'll get to, but it's the four-time All-Star's improved maturity that stood out the most. With his teammate Austin Rivers upset, stalking toward an official, begging for a technical foul that quickly came, as Rivers continued voicing his displeasure, DeMarcus Cousins stepped in, stating post-game that he said, quote, I told him, man, you keep stressing. You're gonna look like me up top. Cousins said that jokingly while pointing to his thinning hairline. Finding form within Denver's system on the court, against the Magic, Boogie had nine points and five rebounds in 12 minutes. His mammoth two-handed slam off a feed from Faku Campazzo ignited Ball Arena and his teammates off the pine in the Nugs' dramatic win at the buzzer over the Golden State Warriors entering the All-Star break. DeMarcus contributed six points, five rebounds, and two assists, making half of his field goal attempts and one three-pointer in a limited 13 minutes off the bench. But the two-time All-NBA player's most impressive performance came on Saturday night against Sacramento, where, against his former team, DeMarcus went three of six from the field, compiling 10 points, eight boards, one dime, and two steals, but more noteworthy, he was tied with another recent pickup and former Milwaukee Buck and Bryn Forbes for a game high in plus minus. Displaying that he's found a new home with the Nuggets after his dunk versus the Magic a few games ago, Coach Malone jokingly reacted to that jam, saying, quote, I haven't seen DeMarcus roll like that in four years. Like I told him after the game, he goes, yeah, you haven't seen that in a minute. I said, a minute, like a minute minute. Cousins would fire back at Malone's jab, though, claiming he dunked like that only a month ago, saying, I got some film from Milwaukee. Nikola Jokic is only six triple-doubles away from having the most of them among all centers in the history of the NBA, but having a five-man who can help keep him fresh for the postseason is, I'm sure, all that matters to the face of the Denver Nuggets franchise in the Joker. DeMarcus's relief of Jokic, plus his added bit of toughness, rebounding, and overall inside presence makes this pickup from President Tim Connolly and GM Calvin Booth an extremely savvy buyout market cop. Moving on to one of our game's most underrated and recently disrespected players. With Denver down two points in the final seconds against the team with the number two record in the NBA, Stephen Curry opted to double the player who he's competing with in the MVP race, and after Jokic kicks it out to Morris, Steph was slow to rotate back to his man. Curry has the number one ranked defensive rating among point guards and does scramble back to make a nice contest, but that didn't phase a stone cold three point sniper like Morris. Monte's made around 40% of his three point attempts while taking at least two triples per game in four separate seasons. Over his five years as a pro, since being selected 51st overall by the Mile High City back in 2017, despite being a proficient backup to Jamal Murray when he's healthy and now stepping up in the starting five, the recognition for Monte Morris has been few and far between. Even a highly paid, well-known media member in Bill Simmons disrespected Morris with this ignorant statement. You're down 3-2 and you're going there game six and they're all going nuts and LeBron hits a couple of those step back threes. Like you're going to fucking feel it. If you're, you're a young team, whether you're, Memphis, you're Denver and you got guys like Monty Morris out there, people like that, 
Morris responded to that clip via The Ringer by tweeting, quote, People like what? I got 43 playoff games and counting. And right out of the gates of the All-Star break, out to further prove that call-out from Simmons wrong against the Kings last night, Morris poured in several clutch buckets, including a smooth dribble combination to break down De'Aaron Fox, leading to a pull-up three-point shot to put the Nuggets ahead. That shot came with 30 seconds remaining, by the way. That's now two game winners in his last three games for Monte, and this type of timely production I'm sure is becoming very typical for basketball fans in Denver. The reason for that in a moment, but Coach Mike Malone spoke on Monte's dagger against Sacktown, saying, Big game Tay shows out again. Him and Nicola playing the two-man game, and Fox went under the screen like three times, basically daring him to take the shot. In 10 postseason games for fans in the Mile High City in 2021, Morris was one of the Nugs' best players, shooting 40% from three-point range while tallying 14 points, five dimes, and a steal per game. Speaking of outstandingly shocking fourth-quarter production, the rook out of VCU in Nishan Busy Bones Highland is right behind his veterans Will Barton and Nikola Jokic in total points scored during the final frame in the 2022 season. Bones was the 26th overall draft selection last year, since showing off a feel for the game, an ability to stay poised under pressure that's beyond his years. Highland's making an incredibly efficient 47% of his deep-range bombs in the final frame. We might as well keep talking about that ever so decisive final period of play, where in addition to Monte and Busy, the legendary dunk contest participant and former Orlando Magic player in Aaron Gordon has also produced exceptionally. Kudos to Will the Thrill Barton for also showing up under pressure, but I thought it was insane how last year's trade deadline pickup in AG is shooting 40% from three-point range in the fourth quarter while making a team best 60% of his overall shots. Putting today's topic into perspective, the scariest part about this current Nugget squad is that while Jokic is putting up historically great numbers, Denver's getting it done collectively as a team, which is dangerous considering Nuggets president Tim Connolly said back on February 11th that Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. could return this season. Connolly said, quote, It's up to them. We're going to clear them at some point in the not-too-distant future, and then they have to determine when and if they're ready. Who's Denver's most underrated player? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to Compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Thierry, who says, and Beard's game shows promise. As a duo, 61 points, 18 boards, and 15 dimes is quite good. It's intriguing to watch them right now, as they still need to learn each other's game. There's potential for an amazing pick and roll, if JoJo can add that to his game. Appreciate every single answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.